Hi everyone, this is Greg again. I just want to talk to you quick a couple things. Um, today is uh, January um, 18th, no, sorry, January 14th, um, 2018, and time is now. Uh, let's see, uh, t um, it's now 10:22. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about like um, the whole dinosaur candidates thing and where that came from, and uh, pretty much how it you know came to be. It was um. This is a story that I started a long time ago, um, about two years ago now, two years ago. And um, the motivation for writing the story was one day I was working a job that I was working at, and I was really frustrated. Actually, I was um, I was at a point where I was seeing no results in the job I was working, and I was just really putting a lot of hours into it, and I felt like I was transforming into something else. I was becoming like a, I was working a sales job. And I wasn't um, making that great of a profit. I was actually just, you know, kind of floundering a little bit. And then what happened was, one day, I came home from work, and I was really um, overwhelmingly stressed. And it was like I had a series of little dinosaurs, a couple of dinosaurs, um, little dinosaur figurines, on my son's high chair. And um, what happened was that I had on one side like Allosaurus, and another side I had like Ankylosaurus. Uh, you know, and I had one dinosaur on one side with a group of dinosaurs around them talking in one of the high chairs. And on the other side, I had uh, the, the Ankylosaurus and the Allosaurus. And they were just kind of like there. And when I had that, I looked it over and I said, oh my goodness, that'd be kind of a cool thing to put together for like a little dinosaur story or something, you know? And then I thought it would be like, you know, kind of interesting. Here it is. My son's sitting on his high chair. And then you have it where, um, you know, two dinosaur factions are fighting for supremacy to win his high chair to be the favorite dinosaur for my son, you know? And so what happened was, like, as I was working on that, <clears throat> it began to grow. And then I had some friends give me a couple of advice on certain things, you know, give me, like, an idea about something. And then I had, like, um, it went from there to various places around New York City. I started, like, you know, posting them and putting pictures with the dinosaurs, like, you know, facing off with each other. Like, they've gone, gone to the beach. And each picture that I started putting together started telling a more and more elaborate story. And then eventually, it's like, I got to the point where they had a scenario where, they started having more candidates. It went from having just the Allosaurus and the Ankylosaurus, which was in this case, some um, names were um, Allo Allorex, you know, Allorex the Allosaurus, and then <clears throat> Ankylosaurus Prime, which is the <laughs> Ankylosaurus. And then we had, um, then, then Candidate Fish joined the situation. And so there was three people there, and then Candidate Fish started becoming really popular, and then everyone started liking him. And then they went to a, a meet and greet, you know, when the candidates are, you know, they had like a meet and greet session and they also had like their first like um, first time debate and it was just during the time right before the whole presidential elections for you know us here you know, um, here in the United States what happened was like it started putting together and then there was a meet and greet shooting and then so what happened was like one of the candidates got all three of the candidates got shot and we started to turn it into a political um, sci-fi drama you know so it went from being just a little story of like my son his high chair to becoming like um, there's three candidates now, and then all of a sudden a fourth candidate jumps in, and that's Mallory. It's a Senator Mallory Macrurosaurus, Macrurosaurus, and uh, she's like a, a Brachiosaur, more like an Apatosaurus type thing. And so she's like she joins the race as one of the first ladies, you know, to be a part of the, the the group. So that's when the 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 dinosaur candidates take root, you know, pretty much the four dinosaur candidates are trying for um, supremacy to to win the high chair to be the best dinosaur in the in the kitchen, you know. And then it just branched from there. It just kind of just took off and just went into so many different ways. It, it was just like, it was an explosion of thought. Like, in the meantime, I was still working at my job and still, like, you know, having, like, something to look forward to every time I came home. Or every time I had an opportunity, I would post a dinosaur picture somewhere and then, you know, I'd pose it here and there and I'd go to different locations. And here I am posing little dinosaur stuff all over. And it was just the three of them, you know? The three of them became the four dinosaurs. And it, eventually, it just started, like, taking over from there. So I started saying, okay, well... You know, every time I signed up on any of the pictures I put together, I always put Greg Valentine animations. And then I had, um, I used to ask my family for advice, like my, my wife and my kids, for advice as to where should the story go. And we'd sit down and have big discussions as to what, where should the story go with these dinosaurs, you know. And it was just like dinosaurs and fish. And we had a thing where we just continued to, like, explain and explain and explain. And, and then eventually we, we started figuring out, like, a big old storyboard. And we had several storyboards. And it just continued to blossom and grow. And I had the kids' input. And we'd do different things. And then we'd have different stories. And then we'd have twists and turns. And so now 
We're actually uh, currently at around episode 830. 830 episodes at this point. Um, about 832. By the time you hear this, it might be like 835 episodes. And I've there's so much story to it now. There is like, there are the investors from the Investors Club. You have Stacy's Castle, and you have um, the Fifth Day, and the Fifth Day um, terrorist organization. You have um, you have the T Rex Club. You have a lot of different story to work with in terms of this world of the dinosaur candidates. And it didn't start. It just started with like a simple idea, you know, in the midst of frustration. It's usually how many good stories start off, you know. And um, one of the things I just liked about it was that it it just has robots and it has dinosaurs in it <coughs> and it has sci-fi and it has, you know, just edgy of type stuff. And as well, now I'm starting to do more animation than I did before. When I first started, I just did a lot of like, posing the dinosaurs and then I would take a lot of pictures and then, you know, as, as anything, I, I've taken like thousands of pictures of this whole entire event. And we've done so many of that. We've done it inside, outside. We have different dinosaurs, of, of robot police officers. We got robot drones. We have um, the robot system. We have the whole system figured out. And then I started to put together a blog to help people who are following to kind of figure it out a little easier. Because what happens is that some days I'd write the story like um, right away. Some days we'd kind of mill over the story as to what the next story will be. And it takes like a couple, three or four days between each story. And doing this for about two years now, you know, just one of those things where we're just sitting there thinking, this has been a very incredible adventure. You know, um, there's so many different like personalities in there you know a lot of some some of the for some of the storyline some of the behind the scenes or some of the dinosaurs that represent different people I know in my life or that I grew up with you know some of them are just <laughs> random people that you know or just names that I know and some of the names don't correspond with people that I actually know so don't try and figure out just because a name is this means that that person or and also sometimes there's a combination of people there are people who remind me of like villains in my life as well as um uh, heroes in my life as well as people who you know, are just, you know, just there in my life, too, as well as my family's life, and who have contributed to us, and have done things for us, as well as done things against us, so each each dinosaur has a certain representation um, of a personification of a person that we know, as well as the fact that the, the dinosaur candidate world incorporates human, humanity as well, and so, to give it a, a setting, it's a sci-fi political drama of dinosaurs trying to win the candidacy. And what has happened now, the two forerunners are, for those of you who have been watching this so far, you have Candidate Fish and you have Senator Mallory McCrurosaurus, you know, Senator Mallory, Senator Mallory for short. Um, they're the two in the lead. And right now, both of them are engaged in, in, um, in covert op missions to try and, you know, help, not only help their situation, but actually help the world. So that makes it difficult for them because, um, you know, in, um, in our political world, in, in uh, you know, our, the human political world system, the um, candidates don't really do anything, they just kind of talk, and they try and get people to follow them by talking, and or promising stuff. Well, in the dinosaur candidates world, they actually have to go do stuff. Just like anybody who's um, in the military, all the generals go out to fight, as well as the leadership goes out to fight. So they're not just sitting in some ivory tower somewhere, um, postulating and, um, you know, telling people what to do. They're actually out on the battlefield. So whenever there's a war, the leaders are there in the field, too. Because, you know, they figure that, you know what, they don't just send out other people's children to battle, they actually go themselves to battle. And then also, in terms of the leadership aspect of, like, you know, um, those who want to be in power, they have to prove it by being, being um, you know, being leaders on the field, as well as being able to show that they can um, prove that they're actual, real, legit, worthy of the candidacy uh, to be president, or in this case, <laughs> ruler of the high chair. Yeah, there's many factions, there's many people who don't like them. There's a lot of talking animals in this. Animals, dinosaurs, flying reptiles, you know, water reptiles. And then there's the fifth day. The thing about the fifth day, one of the things about the fifth day that I just um, started pondering was I, I'm really intrigued by sea animals. I really like sea animals. I think they're really cool and very majestic and just something totally, like, otherworldly about them. You know, I know um, the reason for the name of the fifth day comes from the Bible. The Bible says on the fifth day God created the sea creatures, all the great sea creatures, and also the birds of the air. So that was on day five. On day six he created all the land animals, and he created the, the people on day six. So the land animals are the bane of the six, of the fifth, of the, the animals of the sea and of the air, so the fifth day. So what happens, the fifth day creatures are all about destroying everything that's, you know, the sixth day. 
which includes people and land animals and insects and things like that. So they're all about that. So the reason I totally like admire the sea creatures is that sea creatures are just you know they all operate in a weightless state. You know, they don't like deal in terms of like weight like how we do. They're 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 floating and they're flying like you know angels and and clouds and stuff. You know, they're just floating and flying and they're able to do all kind of things. And they're <laughs> And uh, another thing too about them is like I find very significant and why they're in the story is because you know when you look at the in the Bible narrative about you know when God God flooded the world through the Genesis flood, you know um, the the flood you know mentioned in the Book of Genesis, those creatures are the same creatures you know that survived. You know for example you have like the land animals were all wiped out, but you know the creatures of the sea were not wiped out in the flood because you know they're pretty much of the sea. So those creatures are still there from creation. So anything that's in the fifth day were there when God made them the first day. So one of the things I like about the whole thing in terms of the story is that the story kind of emphasizes that their their colony and their civilization is older, you know, by one day, um, than the land animals. And also the fact that when the flood happened, they're a year advanced more than they are because according to the Bible, it was um, um 371 days. Um, 370 days that, that um, Noah was in the ark, so that means that there was at least 300, maybe 60 days, a year, where there was no, um, a year where there was, um, they were ahead, while their civilization continued to thrive, while, you know, land animals and land, and humans were under the guise of, um, under the destruction of the watery, watery deluge, you know, so, <clears throat> so anyway, so all the floodwaters were there, so they couldn't just start building again. And not to mention, there's only eight people left on the earth at that point because Adam, um, Adam, um, Noah, and his family were only eight. So then the sea creatures had a head start, a really huge head start, as um, in terms of their civilization advancing. So one of the things about this um, the story was that I wanted to just emphasize that the dinosaurs, the, the, the sea creatures, you know, and and sea creatures are so many of plenty. There's so many cool things about them that you just like totally amazed by that. Anyway, so I'm just rambling. But for the most part, though, one thing um, we, we totally enjoy, we totally enjoy um, writing the story, and it's been an ongoing process. I, I don't just write it by myself. The kids give me an idea. Amy gives me ideas. You know, we all kind of sit down and just kind of get ideas every so often. And um, the world is different now in terms of, like, how it started to where it is right now. And um, how it works is that we are constantly just... Um, uh, thinking about what's the next step. Now, there will eventually be an end to the story, and um, I remember when I first started writing it, I thought it was going to be like an end in like three episodes, you know? It would be like, by the time I got to episode three, it would be the end of it, and then that would be it. I'd go on to the next, next segment of my life and do something different, you know? But then when we got like to like episode 100, and we just kept on going, and then we got to episode like, you know, 300, 400, 500, 600, it was just like, it just kept on transforming and I have so many people that look into this and um, are into it and I'm really excited about that because they give me input and sometimes I reward people said you know we'd like to be part of the group and they're like yeah and then, so I put them into the story too and then I have them you know because the story needs more characters so I thank you all for listening to this and um, you know there's more to come and um, the reason why I, I got into the whole story was because it was an opportunity to, to vent and to create something that one was never really created before in the things I've seen out there, um, and like pretty much kind of, there was a lot of like parallels and things that I saw that were amazing in terms of like um, things that are going on that in our political system and our political world as in America, um, and um, just kind of like how things have happened the last couple of years with you know uh, different candidates and how candidates worked out, and I was like having a heyday when it was like you know it was Hillary versus Trump and, and Trump versus Hillary and everything, and all the different candidates and things. But, it's, but just to make sure for the record that, you know, they're not, they're, they don't represent um, Candidate Fish and um, and also uh, Ms. Senator Mallory are not the same as the as the people who norm, people normally think that they are, but they're not. They're actually two separate individuals. They may embody some of their policies, but not necessarily their policies. And it's not like a straight political drama where they're sitting there talking about meetings and things like that. They're involved in the lives of the people around them. And so they, they have a hands-on experience like that, and they're trying, in a sense, to struggle with the common man, but they're also part of the upper class. So just want to let you know that. And thank you all for listening to this, and uh, please subscribe and to the channel. If, and also, please follow Dinosaur Candidates. Hashtag Dinosaur Candidates. It's on Instagram. And if you just type in hashtag Dinosaur Candidates, it'll show you all the connections anywhere, everywhere. 
And just remember, start with episode number one. Okay, episode number one is very important to start with. And you can also find me on um, um, uh, Greg Valentine Animations. My channel is Greg Valentine Animations, and you can also find me on uh, Facebook at Greg Valentine Animations. Right, Gregory Valentine Animations. All right, so thank you so much for that, and um, I wish you all the best. Okay, thanks. All right, bye. Hi everyone, this is Greg again. I just want to talk to you quick a couple of things. Um, today is uh, January um, 18th, 